Hi, I'm Dr. Datish Karazian, the author of Why Isn't My Brain Working? And today I'd like to talk about five things they never told you about depression. Did you know that out of the top 10 most prescribed medications, half of those are antidepressants? And unfortunately, many people that have depression don't respond to these medications. Obviously, the single symptom, single drug model for depression is failing. When we look at depression in the clinical model, we know that there's certain key mechanisms that impact brain health that must be under control in order to deal with this, this chronic epidemic of depression. Today I'd like to go over each one of those things with you. The first key thing that is really important for you to understand about depression is that depression itself is not really caused by a single neurotransmitter deficiency. It's definitely not caused by an antidepressant deficiency. Depression is caused when an area of the brain called the frontal cortex and the anterior cingulate gyrus are not firing. That's basically it. If that part of the brain does not fire, you will feel depression. So one of the things that we have to understand is that many things can cause this area of the brain to not fire. It could be a neurotransmitter problem, but it's usually more than that. And it could be serotonin, it could be dopamine, it could be GABA, it could be acetylcholine, it could be lack of circulation to this area of the brain, it could be blood sugar issues, it could be hormones. So when we look at depression, the key thing is that there isn't one single treatment that always works for depression. The key thing is what's causing the area of the brain associated with mood to not fire. And that's the goal when we try to look at uh, depression from our model. One of the most common causes of depression is actually blood sugar fluctuations. So when you eat a meal, you should have a rise of glucose, but that rise of glucose should be stable throughout the day. Individuals that have blood sugar spikes where they get shaky, lightheaded, irritable, or crave sugar, or crash after meals, all have potential to develop depression. These abnormal blood sugar spikes throw off brain chemicals, they throw off neurotransmitters, they throw off how we have certain amino acids that, that cross into the brain to make neurotransmitters, they have profound impacts on hormones. So one of the th key things that is often overlooked in depression is, is the fact that some individuals have blood sugar issues. And what we typically find in the clinical model is that when individuals can actually stabilize their blood sugar and avoid the afternoon crashes and avoid the sugar cravings and avoid the fatigue after meals, that they have profound impacts in their mood. And many times we see re depression resolve just from that simple uh, lifestyle intervention. Did you know that poor circulation is a major cause of depression? Many people have cold hands, cold feet, and they, they have no idea that they also have decreased circulation to brain. When your hand and feet are cold, it strongly suggests that the circulation throughout your body is, is impaired. And when you have lack of circulation to your tissues, like your hand and feet, you probably have lack of circulation to your brain as well. Blood flow to your brain allows you to carry all your neurotransmitters, all your hormones, all the key things you need that impact your mood. So one of the things that is really important for you to know if you have chronic depression is, do you have poor circulation? So think about it. Do you have cold hands? Do you have cold feet? And the next thing to think about is, have you noticed that when you do things like exercise and your hand and feet get warm, that your mood changes? If you start to find a direct correlation between your mood and cold hands and feet, and then you see your mood improve as your hand and feet get warmer, there's a strong likeliness that the cause of your depression is actually due to poor circulation. Recent research has shown in leaky gut, what they call intestinal permeability. This is a condition where uh, chronic inflammation from eating inflammatory foods like milk and wheat and processed foods cause the in jun tight junctions of the intestines to open up and allow food particles to cross. So now researchers are finding that this mechanism of intestinal permeability creates chemicals in the gut that then impact brain chemical function and lead to depression. So we, know now, we now know that there's this intimate link between intestinal function, digestion of proteins and food, and its impact on mood. Now, if you're suffering from depression and you've noticed that when you eat certain foods that you get bloated, that you get distended, that your joints hurt, um, you wanna see if there's any correlation with depression. Common ones are like wheat and milk. So if you notice if you get exposed to those food proteins and your body starts to hurt and you get bloated and that's when your depression gets worse, your mechanism of depression may really in fact be intestinal permeability. A major area of research in depression is now called the cytokine model of depression. Cytokine is a messenger protein that your immune cells release. And when you are inflamed, your immune cells have an increased flux of cytokine. So if you have noticed that you have joint pain or chronic bloating or just uh, inflammation, uh, whether it's nasal inflammation or you have an underlying autoimmune disease or you have some condition like an inflammatory bowel disease, all those mechanisms create this increased load of inflammatory cytokines. And what researchers have now find, found is that these inflammatory cytokines cause depression. That as these inflammatory mediators are released throughout the body, 
they cross the blood-brain barrier and they decrease the firing of nerves in the brain. They decrease nerve conduction. And when this happens in areas of the brain associated with mood, the frontal cortex and the cingulate gyrus, people become depressed. So many times, the key component to really addressing depress depression is an antidepressant, but an anti-inflammatory diet and lifestyle protocol. So in summary, if you're suffering from depression, it, it's really important that you understand that there are many mechanisms that can cause depression. What's critical for you if you're suffering from depression is to find out that mechanism. At this point, we cover some essential key mechanisms that cause depression and see if you have any of those symptoms. If your energy and mood shift throughout the day, if you crash in the afternoon, if you crave sugar all day, you may have your blood sugar instability as a major cause of depression. If you have cold hands and feet all the time, you may have circulation as your cause of depression. If you always are bloated after you eat, then you may have intestinal permeability as your cause of depression. If your joints hurt, you have a chronic inflammatory condition or an autoimmune disease, your inflammatory response may be the cause of your depression. For more information about how to identify the cause of your depression, please check us out at drknews.com, drknews.com. We also have a one-to-one -one program, which is a six-week program where we take individuals and week by week, we teach them how to identify the mechanism of their depression and then talk about clinical applications to incorporate for themselves to help them improve their brain function and resolve issues they have with mood and fatigue and brain fog and uh, focus and concentration. I also have a book, Why Is My Brain Working? This book took many years to write. We have over a thousand scientific references merging what we know about the science of how to improve brain function with diet, nutrition, lifestyle, and clinical applications. And this is a model that we've used for several years with thousands of practitioners. And we're hoping that this book can also help you in your journey if you're trying to improve your health, your, your brain function, and deal with issues like depression. I'm Dr. Tatis Krasian. Thank you for watching.